you sure? Yep. Are you sure you're ready? Yep, 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 yep. Are you positive you're ready? Let's get a little Wait, over. I have a question. <laughs> Willow has a question? Shh. I have a question. You're not here yet. What's your question? I'm oh, sorry. You're my okay, question go is... ahead. What's your question? My question is, um, so my kids might come home really soon, and okay. it's possible that they'll be in the background. So that's why I was going to have you call a phone. Oh, my, so I could, oh like, my God, no. But That's yeah, the most. Like, you mean you oh, live in you live in a I world and you're know. a human and you've brought other humans? Oh, you awful human! No, God. I know it, it is awful. I I've tried for four years to create this little perfect container mm -mm. where I can do yoga mm -mm. and meditate and talk to humans, and guess what? It has never existed. Ever. Uh, you know what? The water is full in the fish tanks now. But if you listen closely to all of the episodes, a you will occasionally hear my grandson. B you okay. might even see him give oh, me a oh. hug. But C, you would decidedly hear the water moving into the aquariums. That there's a 300 gallon pond in the next room. There's a 10 gallon, a wow. 20 gallon, another 20 gallon. The axolotl has to have a 20 gallon. Um, <laughs> the snake doesn't have much water, but he eats fish, so he has enough water for his fish. There are fish swimming around in the snake tank. Okay, um, that's cool. Well, he's a garter snake. Snake he's, tank. He's only about nine inches long. Snake tank sounds so huge. Sounds so I mean, horrible. I had a, um, I had a, uh, what was it called? I, it's like 16 names. Um, something like pastel, python, ghost oh, python. They, they love yeah. going in. Yeah. Once you get yeah. into python, like the really fancy, you know what? The reality is we're live and I still have the stories card up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Willow Drake. You'll find she's quiet. She doesn't have many opinions. Um, oh my she doesn't talk much. Uh, very mousy voice. You probably won't be able mm. to hear her. <laughs> hey, Willow, how are you? <laughs> well, now I feel like I have to talk this way. So no, that I'm down knows. here so that everybody knows. Yeah, not mousy. All um, of I those am... were exact opposites for the record, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm... I'm really honored oh, to have I, this conversation, so thank you. I've been looking forward to this for months and months. I, Here we are. That, you know what? No, really. That it, I think that we both kind of felt along the way as we danced around our Facebook worlds that are sort of interrelated that like, oh, you know what? I know at some point we need to like take a minute because there's something I just feel the I need to talk to that person. Do you know that, mm -hmm. you know, that that's how it's felt? I agree. So, Ross, are you over there? Yeah, I'm over here. Oh, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> so, Willow, where are you from? Oh. Complicated. No, it is because I'm I'm feeling ornery today. So, I kind of feel like I want to say the truest eye is from nowhere. Ah. Um, you know yeah. what? That's a valid point. Or yeah. everywhere. Both. Sounds yeah. like a poem. <laughs> Om Mu. Do you have any more specific geographical uh, <laughs> attachments? This is gonna be this is gonna be good. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with you today. I um, love okay. it, for the record, understand <laughs> I love language. I will play like this all day long and have the best good. time. Good. Okay. Okay, so it gets it gets it, it remains a little complicated because Willow Drake was actually a character that I created. I was not born willow drake okay i can buy into so, that yeah so so and then so, so there's willow drake so and then there's no, willow and, and then there's who i was born as you know what i mean so i have a question okay mm -hmm. so forget where you're from so your mm -hmm. backstory because you've thought about it where's mm -hmm. willow drake from a be a beyond the third eye so who this body was born as um okay Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh wow! Then, yeah, Midwest. Me too. Well, we're in Columbus. <laughs> nice. That's great. We're just That's up so the road. Silly. You're a little further That's down so the road silly. these days. I no, I love it here. That's silly. Yeah, Midwest is great. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I I miss the weather there. I didn't think that was a thing. Possible. But yeah, yeah. That you you yearn for ice on hills. No, I can understand that. <laughs> 
I well, definitely, I definitely miss the season change. The, the The seasons are always changing all the time, and I like that. Yeah. I like that it's you can never really know what's gonna happen today. You gotta wear a raincoat, and it's freaking, <laughs> it's summertime. You know. What? Mm. So, what do you, what do you miss about the weather here? Well, I'm in Fort Collins, Colorado now, okay. and it is dry as heck. Mm, got <laughs> so you, got I you. miss humidity. My skin just like I feel like a corpse. Like my skin's just falling apart here. So I have to drink like twice as much water as I would have to drink in the Midwest. Mm. And I feel like I have to force myself to bathe, not shower, but bathe every day, like soak in water. And if I don't, literally it feels like my skin's falling apart and my, my hair doesn't love it either. So the dryness is a little rough and then it's really extreme so it'll be 95 degrees at the peak of the day and then it'll be 60 degrees in its coldest that in the summer that doesn't sound like a very good time <laughs> it's a lot my body can't really adjust and then if you get you get more complicated in, into it and i'll take responsibility here is that we we have air conditioning so every time i go in the house i'm like oh well now i'm going to adjust my atmosphere to my comfort level every <laughs> single time you know absolutely so it's the back and forth it's a problem yeah that, it's a problem you know what it's funny we were talking to younger children the other day actually ross probably even doesn't remember as well as i do the concept of what are you talking about we didn't have air conditioning they did just, yeah they, most most of most of the cars my mom had didn't have air conditioning they were messed up it was it was, it was okay you just dealt right. with it it's like driving around in cars of mine. They had they air conditioning. It. It's not that they didn't have they air conditioning. It, but they didn't Past work. Tense, they had air conditioning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew up in a time when I was very young. When, <laughs> no, I'm, the reason I spent so much time at the pool in the library was the pool, obviously, water, cold. Right. You can cool off. Some days it rains, library, air conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I ended up me, right there. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Did I mean? We're, yeah. It's an addiction in itself, just constantly adjusting to make us the most comfortable. But if you've seen like Wally, you see movies like that, it's like, ooh, well, well where's that going to get us? So you Portland know? next? Um, I was in Portland earlier this year. I mean, because then you get the only, you know, you get the one place where it's actually really rainforesty, humidity in North America. It's beautiful. It's beautiful there. I mean, I have never been. I wish I would like to go someday. Too, Too cold. cold. Too cold. See, I, I, my brother swears then San Francisco, that he swears by the 65 average year round. Though it's, yeah, but then it's go too ahead. cloudy. Too cloudy. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> There's, I see, I see, I see. Something, you know? New Orleans. <laughs> uh, too human. Now too we're too human. <laughs> too swampy. Um, too swampy. No, I mean. No, that's Florida. Love, yeah, New Orleans definitely. too windy. Okay. It, it, and, and it's not because of the general winds. It's when they go in circles and roll straight over the top of New Orleans. Uh, that's why. <laughs> And it's, yeah, and then then you talk about culture and politics and all that, and it gets complicated. Well, but it does. You know, it here does. we are. Yeah, no, it does. So, yeah. as we go back in time, and you can pick where you go with this. the The whole point is, as much as people think about the questions, that's the point. It's a Rorschach test of questions. That, to some extent, you're right. You have a different meaning. For where are you from? You have a variety of things that mean something to you as far as your creation and your coming into being. Totally. And so as you go back in that time, what do you see? My first memories are married housing and children from all over the world. That the coolest mm -hmm. thing about being at a university with a father getting a master's degree was that you could live in this housing that the requirement was you had to be in higher ed. Um, you had to be graduate level above. And you had to ha be married and have children. So I grew up in a place where people spoke lots of different languages. This is, these are memories of three, four. I, the, I, if I'm, if I remember right, I think I, we moved to the next place at like five or something. Cause I think I went to kindergarten, the other place. But 
my favorite Halloween of all time was there. And understand, it was all broke students. I mean, nobody had any money. But we all trusted each other. Mm-hmm. That there were, I remember the magician that gave us each a penny that he pulled it out of our ear. You know, I remember people making, you know, things as opposed to it being a big deal. Uh, and all of us kids could literally just run from one end to the other. Now, don't get me wrong. The one end to the other is a small, tiny portion of married housing. It ends up it's a huge place. And the part I remember as huge is tiny. And this, the sandboxes I can't remember being able to get across without peeing my pants. Yeah, about four strides. So my legs were shorter, I, but, but I don't remember that. Pers- all you remember is, oh, my God, how big it was. And in reality, because I visited as an adult, you're like, oh, okay. oh, okay. I was wow, a tiny person. I couldn't make it I across forgot. that field because I, there are multiple. Pl- you know what? Actually, that's how I measured distance. I realized that if you got the urge to pee and ran, could you make it? So there are a number of places in that subdivision I think of as, no, it was really big. I couldn't get across it without peeing myself. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what, is, what are your early memories, however you picture that? Great. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that memory. Well, thank you for listening. That was very, that I'm was very, really warm. I'm very verbose. Mm-hmm. I talk too much. No, it's beautiful. Don't say that. See? I know. I was just actually... allow yourself to express as God wants you to express. Perfect. That's Perfect. the goal. That's kind of what we're. You know what? More of that from everybody in a place where it can be heard make noise and be heard isn't about us making noise the concept all the way along is um we started off by working on hearing each other with where's the line Mm -hmm. and talking about things that aren't easy to talk about um Mm -hmm. some days and we it's a show about not putting on a show so if it was a hard day and you feel like as you're watching it it's uncomfortable i promise it was more uncomfortable here (laughs) um but that we try to mirror and then we love each other and we're back at it yeah. Um, that I think all of us wear too many masks. What are they? Sorry. So, as I went too long again, see, I am a little bit verbose. What are your mm-hmm. memories? Mm. Well, this will definitely be one, just okay. so you know. Um, but let me let me let me ponder for a moment. A lot of like the best memories I have. Or I should say that I hold on to and I choose mm. to recognize um, are from when I lived at my grandmother's house when I was really little. Okay. Um, it was kind of like I watched like a lot of Disney movies <laughs> when I was a little <laughs> kid. Um, and that totally shaped my expectations for reality as an adult. <laughs> Uh, and I'm just now realizing that, you know, the, the so Dalmatian generation. I know how old you are. Yeah, okay. Totally, totally. I got you. <laughs> yeah, I was the the. I, we had all of the Disney on VHS. Like it was an intense situation. We had all of them. So, um, and I watched them often. And, you know, I when I think about even deep in that, when I feel the memories of going being at my grandmother's house, it's just. She had a pool and she was beautiful and she dressed like she was beautiful. You know, she knew it. It was great. Ooh, right. Um, sassy, you know, very sassy and a saleswoman and worked out for 40 years and she gardened. She had a beautiful backyard. I, I've you know, seen pictures of you. Amazing. I think you, you definitely mirror some of your grandmother. Well, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. And a beautiful backyard. So she did she garden? She did. Um, she was great with gardening. She's an amazing cook. She could cook anything from all over the world, and she did like just an incredible meals. Um, I baked with her a lot, but yeah, I mean, I had a great time when I was a kid. I had a great childhood. Don't and you love baking memories? All of that. Yes, I. Yes, I love food. <laughs> so, oh, God, yeah. me too. <laughs> Those are the best memories. I, it's like yeah. painting. It's like a beautiful palette that I can just pull from a million places. I love, I made, uh, I'd never had Impossible Burgers before. I'm pretty oh, much vegan. Yeah. Well, I have a recipe for chili that I do, which is all 
you use the leftover hamburgers after you've cooked them. But I started with five impossible burgers and browned them like burgers. And then I went my traditional recipe, um, which a lot of beans, um, lots of fresh garlic and peppers and, you know, all just a lot of flavor. And I, oh my God, I was, it was, I had meat chili yesterday. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know how to feel. I was like, I haven't eaten yeah. anything that texture in mm, oh, almost, a little yeah. over a year. It was kind of mm -hmm. like, okay, am I, what? <laughs> well, it bleeds. What's going on like, right now? On the, on the stove. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's trippy. So, so when you think of those memories, do you feel mm -hmm. like that, like I said, I can see maybe, but do you feel like you carry that torch? Yeah, well, it, it's, this is where I struggle sometimes with um, authentic communication because it really depends on the channel that I'm on, that I'm speaking on, right? So okay. on one level, on one level, my grandmother is separate from me and my memories are of two people experiencing life together. Yes. And then on one channel, the only thing that I can perceive is something that's inside of me as well. Mm -hmm. So when I look at her and see, oh, she's a great cook, I'm a great cook. You know, when I see, oh my God, she's really present and loves art and she's really creative, I am all those things. Yes. Yeah. So that, I, that yeah. it's for me, perspective is an interesting thing. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about the idea that uh, the one lesson I've learned is that the the tool most widely used for trying to understand what's going on around me is one that I know I cannot rely on. It's not right. scientifically valid. Um, that perspective will lie to keep you dealing with, you know, keep your brain happy, you know, give yeah. you what you know, um, and, you know, define things as other than they are. So I've be a lot of this, a lot of what led to us doing this project was my thoughts on, well, then I want to see from everybody else's eyes. Mm. That um, I joke often with Ross about the idea that it's, it's the African proverb about the blind mice. It's that each of the three blind mice, when, you know, encountering an elephant, describe a totally different reality, true to their perspective, defined in every way as real and honest and legitimate. But you still can't see the elephant in the room. So I, 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 I kind of very much, I think of it as ohm and moo, not that you hear a lot of moo talk these days. <laughs> God, that sounds mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, the all thing and the no thing being the same thing. Um, is how it's always, and that's been that way in my head for a couple decades. That th my trying to understand how I fit in but didn't fit in, how I am and I'm not, you know, how I'm universe and at the same time I'm me. If that does that resonate kind of with what you were trying to say, where it feels like I'm not attached to the perception in the sense of. Yeah, that I know, even if I think I was talking to my dad two days ago, or a week ago, or whatever, it doesn't matter to me where it came from. I know it came from inside. Does it have a deeper meaning out? I doesn't, I'm not attached to the how. If that, does that, am I following sort of, or am I way off the mark? <laughs> no, we're in the same plane. Totally. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah, no. <laughs> hmm. So... The next question is the one that a lot of people stumble over. It's one that I've stumbled over because of the change in direction. I mean, I'm a guy that, oh dear Lord, I've had every job under the sun. Um, I've been a truck driver, did that for 15 years and probably, you know, averaged 50 to 75,000 miles a year, but did a lot of working on site and getting to meet people. That's the part. I did it because I got to travel basically all of the states east of the Mississippi and then a little few the other side and I'd travel and then spend a day working with people. Um, it, it hit my Gemini mind a little better to have days of total silence and then days of lots going on. Um, but all of that 
fit the traditional. I mean, I'd already broken the mold in my family of going, no, I don't want a job with a tie. Um, that I had tried that. You know, I went and did that. I'm really, it's not that I'm bad at it, at sales or those things, cause, but that it didn't resonate with me. And it wasn't until I was 50 and all of a sudden, okay, whoa, I got to do this. That now what I'm doing is trying to get a nonprofit off the ground. You know, old people are like, well, you need sponsors, you need this, you need that. I'm like, no, I don't, that's not right work money. I'm, I'm not okay with that inside me currently. Um, not a debate for anybody else, just the current, I have a m weird financial thing going on in my head that vow of poverty kind of stuff. And that I'm afraid of anything being attached to the studio in a way that is, I want it to self-fund itself eventually is the goal. I don't want any money coming to me from that side of things. I want it to all be so that more voices can be heard. But at the same time, oddly, that means that I'm, you know, asking people for money and those kinds of ridiculous things. Um. Or as Ross will say, I'm not asking people for money. <laughs> There's, I put a tab. There's a little tab on the bottom of every show that says, hey, if you want to. Um, but so I get in a weird place. Of, okay, am I... I'm, I'm struggling with the ego of asking for alms is the easiest way for you and I to have that conversation. So in defining what work means, I'm at a weird, weird place with it. But what is, how do you work? <laughs> Sorry, it's just, there's, no, it's there's so much. That's, that's um, kind of the joy of it. Uh, we were talking yeah. the other. I'll, I'll bam, don't worry, I got you. Um, we were talking the other day about the fact that that's really the most fun of it. That what we do doesn't. You're not. You could tune in every time we do this, however many times a week, because we do it kind of as people can fit it guerrilla style. Then bring it out to YouTube and Spotify. You know, a variety of other. Um, media outlets and that it goes sort of it, every everyone goes a slightly different place depending on the person because the, the questions are set up for it to be yeah kind of a sharing eventually we're going to run out of stories about U of M but you know what so far I'm doing good <laughs> you're doing great I try to resonate with the person and see what would be meaningful and so the odd thing is I would think I'd, I'd have run out of stories. And the funny thing is, as I spend more time thinking of things like that first, you know, those first memories, I, they're clearer. There are more of them. Um, it's so the work's been actually a really joy, a real joy for me. It's, it's, we were talking the other day, it's a form of prayer for me. It's beautiful. And how do you work? Well, I have, this um it's kind of hard to explain i have a degree in psychology and okay. i, I kind of i'll go back to the very beginning so when i was really young i knew that i had perhaps an unusual connection with humans that i couldn't really explain um but i always knew that i had something an affinity something some sort of connection some sort of understanding a third eye connect. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I get you. Um, and, and you know, when you were speaking before about the known and the unknowable, the, the, the Tao that can be named <laughs> is mm -hmm. not the eternal Tao. All right. so, Words don't cut it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, well, the thinking mind can't think about what is unthinkable, and God is outside of what is knowable. Mm. So. You can only get to the door with your knowledge and your understanding. You have to drop it in order to drop into eternity. So anyway, um, I knew that I had a connection to people. And so I, you know, I, you I'm a Leo, it. so I'm a big show pony. So I was all, you know, five extracurriculars and in high school. And I spoke at high school graduation in front of 2,500 people you. and, you know, went to liberal arts college and was the president of the psychology honor society. And, you know, I was very proud of who I was. Right. Um, and it was great. It was a great time, but I didn't feel connected to the American psychological association way of 
healing people. Mm. It was um, labeling personalities and giving diagnoses and, and drugs. And so I fell away from it because I, even though I was taking Buddhism classes in college, I wasn't really aware of Buddhist psychology. And mm. um, I think I felt fear too. I was struggling a lot with my identity. So I did not go on to get my master's like I had originally intended to be a therapist. Instead, I went on and did serving and bartending and went into corporate and out and in and out and all all over the world, all over I, the planet and all over my head. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And looking for something. Oof. I resonate with that so hard. That You yeah. know what? It was, I, I can remember, so... I did the, no, I'm going to go live the bohemian lifestyle, dad. I don't want to go get my PhD in six years down at the University of Miami of Florida. You know what? I've decided I don't want to be a marine biologist anymore. I never even went. I was supposed to be, I was accepted to their six year PhD program. So bachelor's, master's, PhD in six. <laughs> and I blew it off. <laughs> and and then, and then, then I made a baby. <laughs> there you go. And there you go. That so okay. So, so you asked me how you're I searching. Work. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, my brain. So I was getting, I guess, to the I tangent a lot. Go. You know, no, you're fine. But I, my brain. There's something in my brain that is um, almost savant level at, at finding patterns. And right now, I use that as a coach, as a mindset coach. Wow. Um, yeah. You're, you're blowing my mind here. You're giving my speech and it's a piece I've never heard anybody else give. <laughs> he constantly he constantly talks about like how he sees patterns and I mm. shoot, I I talk about how I see patterns. It's it everything every problem that I've ever seen has always been connected to me. Like I've always I've always thought of things as like if you solve this problem, that's going to create this problem, which you have to solve. Mm. That's going to create this problem, which that there's a logic. It, it, go, it goes to a, like right. everything's connected together and it's finding mm. the Genesis or the start to, to go. Do you know mm. where I ended up using that for a while? Willow. And I want to come back. I also found it incredibly helpful and a joy when building walls out of natural stone. I put five tons into my mom's yard the year I decided I was going to be a landscaper and really what she was doing was supporting me. <laughs> but the giant puzzle all over the yard that I could flip around in my head and run over here and grab this piece and run over there and grab that piece, it was, I also used it for stacking pallets. But couldn't help that it constantly was applied to the world too. That I think I have a question. Did you have dyslexia? Did you um, have trouble reading at first? I not that I remember. Did um, you write pages backwards? No, not definitely not. Okay. Definitely not. Because yeah. I've noticed that's another one I've noticed. Because the I I think that some of that is you people that can see things three dimensionally don't get why other people don't understand the letters going the other way. Mm. Feature not a fault. <laughs> totally. Okay, so you've always seen patterns. So where did this pattern of seeing patterns lead you? Well, now I'm in an interesting space where the combination of spiritual intuition and creating a channel like mm -hmm. we have right now, we have a channel between three people. Um, Absolutely. And then, I mean, in the Bible, Jesus said, when two or more are gathered, Mm -hmm. And my name, there I am. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm here to connect. And that is love. So here we are. But anyway, um, now I'm in a place where I have a strong intuitive connection with people. And I can use that intuition to know things that are unknowable, that I shouldn't mm -hmm. know, you know, because I haven't been told them directly. The uncomfortable bits and, they can't expose, but that we can feel. Yeah. Yeah, like talking to one woman I knew based upon, I don't, it's a combination. So I'm using, there's like, what I'm thinking is happening, what my brain is thinking is happening is there's an intuitive connection happening. Mm. There's the psychological awareness and actual education and knowing and knowledge that I have um, of how personalities work and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there's a soul connection. 
there's a part in my heart that can connect with you based upon storytelling, which is so necessary for human existence, right? Yeah. Like it's what makes us people is, is our art and storytelling is our art. So as you tell your stories, there's like little things that start firing in my brain. And I know mm. you guys experience this too. Like, oh, that's yep. a synchronicity. Oh, that's a synchronicity. Oh, and it's funny because these things, as long as we allow our hearts to remain open, which we don't you often times, it's, it's actually constant. And then we like close our hearts and we were, oh my God, life's hard. I have to take out the trash again. Okay. And then you make a connection the next day and you're like, oh my God, synchronicity. Like it's never happened. It's a surprise every oh, time. Oh my God. Oh, exactly. Wow, is God I, real? No, no, he's not. Is God real? I'm working real on a book God? about epiphanies <laughs> and that that constant the the story i was going to tell ross was the other was yesterday when you came out for the hair dye so i'm i was dying my grandson's hair as i do and uh, there was a debate as often there is with a nine-year-old and it ended up we weren't doing his hair yesterday i wanted his hair wetter he did not but i was sitting there and just kind of relaxing kind of i was taking my pause and ross came out to ask about the hair dye which made me immediately realize that if I just went in and looked at my grandson and said, hey, next time you wash your hair, I need it to be wet because we're pulling it back and just doing the tips, as opposed to us fighting about whether or not he's going to get it wet now. And right. this was the thought that went through my head. But Ross had said, hey, I thought you were going to dye Bentley's hair. <laughs> and <laughs> I looked up at him. I got up and said, oh, dude, thank you. Thank you so much. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, listen, if you hadn't come asked, come out and asked about the hair dye, I wouldn't have the thought that was the solution to why he was currently irritated with me and I was irritated with him. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, we call it, I call it, we talk about my AK. So I don't know if there, there used to be a, a doctor, a psychologist, a, a, a Dr. Cube. Mm. And Dr. Cube would say that it had been a good day <laughs> if he didn't have to use his AK. But now, he's got to have a doctorate by now. He's not as cold as he used to be, right? I don't know. Anyways. He's not as icy. My ambient knowledge. <laughs> that in paying attention to what's around you, everything from the earth to the stars and beyond never stops teaching. I find that I've, tr I've stopped trying to turn my subconscious off. Because that's what I used to do all the time. Because like, like you guys talk about, like, I see I see patterns and my brain will like spin off of those and just go and go and go and it like I realized okay if my subconscious is always moving and always seeing patterns mm. I'm always gonna have material to pull from <laughs> right I'm always gonna have something in my brain I just I just have to like chill out and let my brain do its thing a little bit it's so funny, Willow, because what I tell people is that I live tangentially to the rest of the universe. <laughs> Everything everybody says makes me think of something. There's always a connection. Yeah. Yeah. I, I imagine you guys both do a lot of thinking, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but we work on not thinking, too. <laughs> You know, uh -huh. we, we we were we have to make our way through the the next two days of Woodstock. Still, we were watching. We, <laughs> we we music is a major part of the studio. It's a really good it's a really good way of like if you want to not think about anything, put on some music, put on a show, put on something, put on something that like you don't have to use your brain for. We we love documentaries about musicians making music or like you know. We or I'll I'll hit him up with I've got a bunch of movies that in my head I think of are teaching of a comp more compassionate way that are kind of off the beaten path. Are you talking about uh? Which one, Hector? <laughs> the uh, no. Which uh, one? Get low. <laughs> no, it's Carmody. Are you oh, talking about Carmody? No, yeah. I, oh, okay. We have joked lately about the idea that I should put together a list of the best Carmodies. <laughs> there comedies that involve karma like groundhog's day if you make her the concept of heaven or nirvana he doesn't get there until he finally discovers he has to work on himself mm. <laughs> he, ch he chases after the more you know physical things he robs he dates the girl that he doesn't care about then he chases after a lust he tries to be exactly what the girl wants <clears throat> excuse me but in the book it's like thousands of years 
And so by the end of whether you think of it as cycles of life, whether you think of it as the way life works, if you're trying to find your way there, that until it's that he becomes a better person, he's helping people because helping people matters to him. He's that's the transition in Groundhog's Day. Bill Murray, I'm telling you, there's a million compassionate thoughts through every movie. He hides them. <laughs> Great. I loved him. I loved him in um, what's that zombie movie? <laughs> yes, Zombieland. <laughs> Zombieland, yeah. Zombie. <laughs> I know he played a really tiny part, but I, I just I, I love I, Bill Murray. Love I, I, you know what? Yeah. There's, there's a great movie out, uh, documentary out there about the realities of Bill Murray, because he is famous for just appearing places. That there yeah. is a story in a college town about the fact that they were all partying in the living room. They'd run out of cups. And the girl goes walking into the kitchen that has the lights off. And there's a guy standing there washing the dishes. He said, oh, I saw you guys had some oh. dishes. I was just washing them for you. She goes, yeah, I just realized we were out of cups to you. And it's Bill Murray. Oh, my God. <laughs> I couldn't I imagine. Die. I couldn't I imagine die. walking in the kitchen there's, and seeing Bill Murray. There's footage <laughs> of the party he showed up, up at where he'd been hanging out at the bar he liked the local group that was there, and the, but they said they had to go. They said they were playing a party. Right. And he said, well, let me be your roadie. And he shows up carrying the equipment for the band at this house party. And then he grabs a tambourine and drives the party insane. Eventually, the cops are called. The guy takes the video camera to the door as the cops are in, and he's going, listen, I don't know what to do. Bill Murray's in the house. <laughs> the cop is standing there. Bill Murray gets up in his face and shakes the tambourine. The cops then stay for another two hours <laughs> for the Bill Murray party. For the Bill Murray party. They stayed for the rest amazing. of the party. Meaning of life. That's amazing. My, my favorite Buddha of the Buddhas is the Santa Buddha. That's the I know way, that's not what anybody calls him. That's the best way to use your celebrity is to make people <sighs> have like enjoy, enjoy life right? and stuff. You know? Well, that, so it's the Santa Buddha is the one with the big toy sack on his back, and supposedly he took a vow of silence. And every, if somebody, he wasn't in no way related to Santa Claus. It just reminds me of the Judeo Christian story as I know it. But if you asked him what the meaning of life was, is he'd lay the bag of toys down in front of you. And if you asked him, how do you practice? He would hand you a toy. And that makes me ask, Willow, how do you play? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know. It was, I, for the record, it's just like you. I didn't know that's where it was going, but it was perfect for the next question when I got there. So, of course, that's where it went. Uh, usually I play like this in conversation. Mm. Um, I have kids, so... I play with them, but I don't connect to that play very much. Um, I was I was very active as a kid, so the way I used to play was like soccer and movement, and I really competitive sports is so fun. Good time, field day at school, all of that. Um, okay. So you need more time on the floor, more time right at their height, yeah. letting yourself be that age and do the other part that was the coolest i don't i sorry i didn't mean to in any way project because i was just thinking about that the nine-year-old is who taught me how to play again mm. but it was because i i had i decided the most meaningful meditation i could do at a time when i wasn't meditating um was that when i spent time with him i had to slow down to his speed mm -hmm. um that we spent I remember when we first started walking around this block, it would take him 45 minutes. Um, Ross, what's his current time on around the block? What I did he do today? Uh, we, we didn't time it today. You st I, I'm but told you I stopped say, three times. Yeah. And he did yeah, not I stop. Twice. I stopped twice. <laughs> Actually. Ross, thank God, is here at 19 and playing the role of big brother to my grandson. Because I'm telling you right now, I ain't running around the block even if I stop twice. <laughs> <laughs> Just, so do you feel like you make... So, you know what, though, I totally value this as play. I, I don't, I don't want to take away from that answer at all. Because mm -hmm. I, 
I was at a low point a couple weeks ago having trouble doing some of the scheduling myself um, in the sense that I did a lot of the scheduling rolling up to Memorial Day and then I was kind of overwhelmed and Ross filled with these amazing musicians and he's we're doing a ton of that it needed to happen we're we're showing more of that face if you will um but that i have trouble remembering to play for this for my sake like yesterday was really meaningful to me because it was oh wow shit i paused you know and that's so hard with kids do you find a pause how do you pray? Yeah, I, I do um, prosperity programming in the morning. Mm -hmm. And that has become a non-negotiable okay. for 10 minutes. <laughs> like, yeah. And I mean, that 10 minutes is guaranteed every day. And I know that sounds, no. I mean, to me, it sounds like a small amount of time. Um, but I'm fighting for that 10 minutes to be right. consistent. Because in my life right now, consistent isn't really a thing. You know, um, I, I, I'm not going to, I've heard perhaps, <laughs> Yeah. you know, but it's an itch. So when you're on, when you're at that pace and you know what, in my head, how do I pray is one of the most important things in my life, but most of it is not in a form that people would go, Oh, he's praying it non-traditional Judeo Christian kind of thing. You know, that I think part of prayer for me is Violet Tran from Vietnam reminds me every two weeks that meditation is non-distraction. So that every moment I'm 100% present in is meditation in its own right. Um, but I try to, you know, this has become a huge form of my prayer. If, if I don't have these interviews, what happens is in a week where we were slow a couple of weeks ago, I literally looked at Ross and I said, no, I, wow, I, I no, I need, we need to get those scheduled. I'm not going to, I, I'm not doing well when I'm not doing it. So how do you, what's prayer for you? Okay. So side note, random side note, You're fine. Ross, I meant to say this to you earlier. Yes. You should write this down if you have a pen. Um, the subconscious speaks on YouTube. Mm. Spirit told me to tell you about that one. So check it out. Subconscious speaks. Okay. The subconscious there you go. Speaks. That's beautiful. Okay. I will um, that, that one. Up. Yeah, that that's going to be one you're going to want to take slowly okay. <laughs> and listen to maybe a couple of times. Okay. But that's the next one you're ready for. So anyway, sorry. Okay. So what no. was the question? What was the question? First off, <laughs> no, it's one of the most powerful things that happen in a shared space that we're mm. creating an organic object here. It's mm -hmm. not, you talk about patterning and I think uh, that if I were to had to put on a resume, I'd say I'd better than, I'm better than average at understanding strictly organic promotional patterns which sounds great until you get to because I'm broke um, <laughs> but that I've stumbled into time and time again like so for instance with this show this show was not a thought about how do you promote something this show was I want to know how do I figure out how do I actually under I want to com communicate and actually connect um, mm -hmm. but then you go well shoot but what I'll do with that is then I'll share it on to those people's pages uh, partially because hey you know what I want them to have it and partially because B then their friends look at it and then I have there are more people interested and it kind of accelerates and that's how I've I've treated Facebook as a valuable tool that I could it made sense to me I could see roots and trees and it, it followed um, where was I going how do you pray what what's meaningful to you is finding your center. See, I can. Woo. Okay, I'm back. Oh, I know. I feel that. Yeah. Um, how do I pray? So, I do my prosperity programming. Mm -hmm. I tell you that, and um, it's a declaration. Okay. So probably similar to what you're saying. Um, so a couple of things have come up while you were talking. Uh, John one one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word 
was God. Yes. So literally what you say becomes your reality because the creator is within you. Yes. As you speaketh, so it is done. <laughs> it is done. That's yes, yes. not proper old English, but you know. <laughs> um, so that you is so... the divinity and the divinity is you. Exactly. <laughs> and that's not old English. That was just I'm fun. Glad you did it. <laughs> yes. So I um, are you familiar with Robert Russell? The name sounds remarkably familiar, but I may be thinking of Bertrand. So Robert Russell. Bertrand. Robert Russell wrote a book called "You Too Can Be Prosperous." Okay. And in it, he gives you a step-by-step -step guide. It's on YouTube. Okay. And it's great. The narrator is amazing. It's free. Um, he gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to remove the blocks to prosperity because according to his perspective and interpretation of the Bible and spirituality at large, okay. abundance and prosperity is the law of existence, right? That's just I, what is. I think I, and, am, I think I am abundant and prosperous. I think, well, I, you, I you think I'm overflowing. Think it. You have no, 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 to no. feel it. Uh, yeah, that too. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in. This is prayer. The, the funny yeah. part is that I, I have pieces of the eightfold that I believe strongly in that touch okay. me. So when I think of right work, and this is no judgment on anyone else, my rule on omnivorousness is even, hey, if you feel bad about eating meat, don't. If you don't feel mm -hmm. bad about meeting eat, that's cool too that mm -hmm. I'm a vegan because I was eating a filet mignon one night and lost the taste for meat Yeah, over a year ago. I just quit eating it. Um, that all of that just kind of fell away. Uh, it was not, I, I love cheese. I was known for being the biggest meat eater carnivore in the world. Barbecues were, they knew they needed 20 extra beef hot dogs because I might show up. <laughs> so I mean, it was as extreme. I, I now, and what I ended up filling with was rice and beans. And then one day it dawned on me that what I was eating was what the majority of the people of the world eat. Um, that's my primary diet. It was, I, it's all been, I'm, I'm as prosperous as my eyes are open. I, I'm here with you. I'm sharing space with you right now. And that nothing compares to the value of another human being giving me their time i i i'm yeah. overwhelmed with riches and mm -hmm. I, I i did I, t I even talk about at the, this point relative to gratitude which is one of my primary meditations um it's what pulls me out of the darkness it's what's when it's hard um that's where i go that it's changed every bit of how i i see the world i mean we joke about the gratitude diet that the way the gratitude diet works is you can only eat things you're grateful for. That you're present with. Mm. So that, you know, that when I sit down with my food, I'm with it. That when Buddha said, what's the difference with your monks? He said, well, no, the only, my monks are no different than any other monks. The only difference is when they sit, they sit. And when they chew, they chew. So mm. in my head... I'm as prosperous as anybody else. I mean, it's all me anyways. Not in the sense of a bad way. It's all you, too. I, I joke with Ross about the concept of at what point do the cells in your body become not Ross? And then I go, hey, are you in the universe? Welcome to the divine. I, it's all theory. I'm a hypothesis guy. I love science. <laughs> I, I Everybody's like... You're so spiritual. I was like, let me logic it out for you. <laughs> Can I step over to the quantum side for a minute? <laughs> what do you love? Listening to your stories. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pass it on. I'm told that'll help. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting about your mind is. Go ahead. It's a fortress, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So whatever you think you know 
is not what's going to free you. That's not the work. Mm, okay. The more I don't know, the freer I am. Mm -hmm. I have moments. Because you have agreements. Every time you think you know something, that's an agreement. And the more agreements you have, the more layers you put on between you and your full expansion. We call them attachments. But yeah, no, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreements, attachments, the things that <clears throat> hold you to this world. That I was really proud of where I was at relative to my birthday until I'd actually got here. <laughs> <laughs> that, of course. Mm -hmm. There will be struggle. My favorite is, um, there's a great, it's that the Dalai Lama was giving a speech, and but it, at the end they let reporters ask some questions. And this changed my life. I mean, literally the epiphany in the moment of one of my favorite giggly faces as they asked him if he still had struggle, he motioned with one finger at his throat and he said, yeah, I, this morning I have a little struggle right here that the first thing is that it's going to suck. The question is whether or not you realize you're in this beautiful place full of fruits and flowers. There's there's weeds everywhere. But, of course, there's, you know, he had his, his throat hurt a little bit that day. And my days aren't perfect, you know. But I know this thing. And I feel like I, okay, so when I look back now, and I used to say, rest in the pieces so they'll all fall into place. And when I look back now, and this happened shortly before 50, that it, it, it happened and I looked back and it was like, holy shit. I mean, it was a holy shit moment. It was like, oh, fuck. Sorry. Um, I mean, it was overwhelming. Everything fell into place. Every worst moment, every best moment, every good moment. And a lot of the worst stuff was the most important stuff. And you, why you couldn't take any of it back because it's what brought you here. So the scientist in me goes, wait a minute, that's an experiment. Mm -hmm. I can look back and from this perspective, I realize all of the absurdity falls into place. That there were reasons why I was in Thailand, reasons why I was in prison, reason why I had a million jobs, reason why, you know what, I had the outlook I did, reason why I quote unquote fought with the universe for 25 years because it was all lesson that when I look back if it all falls into place what I can know about the future other than I lack the proper perspective is that it will all fall into place mm. that any perceived meaning holding me back about thinking I ought to know exactly what I'm doing based on the past is bullshit but I need to keep trying it's not a oh you can just let go and fall I mean that's a decision too it's it, it, it does involve I find <laughs> actively being in the universe I don't want anybody to mistake that for us oh, so I could just stay at home and play some more World of Warcraft <laughs> mm -hmm. all of all of what you said gets distilled in my mind as it is what it is and it sounds crazy it sounds crazy right I know it sounds crazy but if you think about it, right, everything is how it is, and it will con and things will things will be like what they're gonna be. Well, that I, I will give you this: that the epiphany yesterday with my good friend Justice sleeping there, and me, I got down on the the deck with him. He, <laughs> I love him. He's like, I need to lay down for a minute. He laid down on the deck. <laughs> We're mid conversation. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, okay. It's like, hey, I got to lay And then eventually Ross went in and I sat <laughs> down next to him. Yes. And as it always has been. Doesn't mean you know it or... It, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you stop. It doesn't mean... It doesn't mean you... No amount of understanding that makes it look right from this perspective. That's so stop accurate. trying. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Is, it's not going to make sense. This is not the way you look at that because it'll, it'll mess with you. It's not going to make sense. It'll work out somehow. It's like looking at objects maybe closer than they appear. They're flipped left and right. I don't know. But the question, Willow, is what do you love other than me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so this is interesting. So Osho said, are you familiar with Osho? I do. Yeah, okay, we can go there. Okay. I've got Osho the Osho says, Tarot deck behind me. Not that I go. use it. I don't actually use it, but anyways, <laughs> I do have one. 
You will use it because it's furniture. You know, I'm still using it. But anyway. Well, riders do or um, die. I just have a deck I prefer if I'm going to actually play with one. But anyway. You know, when you play. Ojo says that you have everything you need in the moment if you can only be present with it. You can mm -hmm. reach out and grab it. And I always perceive that literally like magic. Like you can just conjure up whatever you want. But it also has... has evolved in my mind as this idea that nothing's happening right now. <laughs> the only thing I really need is a glass of water and I'm going to get that and drink it. And now I'm fine mm -hmm. and nothing is still happening. There's nothing to do, but we're addicted to thinking. We're addicted to stimulation. We're addicted to doing and we're obsessed trying to earn our way to heaven mm. earn our way to well, acceptance in our society and acceptance within ourselves well I, I have this theory and no offense intended but it's the it's a reality of our world today dick measuring has never gotten us anywhere B yeah. everybody lies C no amount of the size of your wallet changes the size of your dick. That's just not even how you measure success or dicks. <laughs> That's it's truth. It's it's that we are obsessed with the measurement. I was going was that during the show that I was going off about measurement? Yeah. And everybody so. measuring things. Maybe. That we were talking so Ross was having a moment of I, I feel like I'm trying to not talk too much and not talk too little, and so I'm keeping and I said, that's the, just stop measuring. It's the measuring that screws it up. That even in, there are lots of groups that discuss merit or discuss, there are churches that once upon sold ways in. There's, <laughs> yeah. Putting on a show that will show the rest of the world you deserve to go. Does that, is that kind of what you mean? As opposed to, it doesn't really matter what I mean. It matters what you get from what I said, and it sounds like you got what you needed. Oh, stop it. <laughs> what, do, what do you love, Willow? <laughs> Dear Lord, I love I you. Know. No, I know. No, I love this. The whole I... time, okay? I've been holding back because I do love you, and, you know, if you shake someone who's sleepwalking, they may punch you in the face. Well, so I will actually tell you that I am outlawed from beating Ross with bamboo sticks, so I have found that if unexpectedly I tickle his armpit, that it sets <laughs> off a fear so high that, that I can then just use my ninja it's fingers terrifying. as like I might tickle you and all I gotta do is touch him in his pressure points and he'll jerk every which way and Absolutely laugh terrifying. and it's like he'll be an out of control and I know in that moment there's nowhere else he could possibly be but right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying desperately to run away, but yeah. Well, no, 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 I'm not. It's not, <laughs> it's not, like, yeah. it's not yeah. quite as forceful as he's making it out. I promise mm -hmm. half of it is just the level of fear that can be inflicted by the fact he thinks I might tickle him again. <laughs> hey, Ross, can I, yeah. can I say something to you? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Just say no. Go ahead. Um... I've held back so many times on my um, the messages that come through because Speak. If, you, if when you open yourself up as a channel, some of the things you're just like, I'm not going to say that to another human that I don't really know. Don't, you do don't know us. That's the, whole, that's the whole point What's of what up? we're doing. What's up? Yeah. It's interesting that I've been experiencing this for like four years, though. Well, my whole life, really, just different bouts of pretending like it's not there and I still question it. But anyway. You should talk um, to. I've got somebody that you should talk to. You, Medium. We should do a show. A medium, a medium circle, you know. Denise um, Lascano, who goes to the Buddhist Shinto temples to help them deal with ooh. hauntings. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Does that like go, oh, wait a minute. That yeah. sounds validated. <laughs> right? You know, you just don't know what you don't know. I didn't know. There's some things I found out who exist, and I'm like, okay, that's a thing. All right. Well, All right. In, in my head, there's no magic. There's just things I don't understand. Yeah, and I don't want to. And there's to. a I lot of stuff. I, well, I... I, I, you know what? Five hundred years from now, there are going to be large pieces of our conversation that are like, "Oh well, yeah, no, we all know that." <laughs> duh. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of duh. 
they, yeah. you know, they're going to bring up chemo and talk about, so they used to like inject poison into people in the hopes of killing the cancer before the people. Yep. Totally. Yup, they did. But that. it's the best we got right now. Look back 500 years. We're not drilling holes in skulls anymore. <laughs> We're not mm-hmm. bloodletting anymore. You know. But that's that's knowledge. Looking at knowledge, judging mm-hmm. knowledge, as perspective. To the, well, the wisdom of we've just been evolving. Right. We've just been evolving, and how beautiful every step of that evolution has been. I think as a species, <laughs> we're at about middle school. Yeah, maybe. Well, lots of arguing on the playground. You can see the bratty rich kid. You can see the abused kid. You can see the the Asian kid that thinks he's smarter than everybody trying to play a long game. Nothing against, I mean, specifically Winnie the Pooh looking Asians. I don't mean anything relative to China and its people because I love all of, I, I wish I could go back to Asia right now. But that, I know. And then I, how did, how did I get that boost? Where'd that boost come from? So what did you want to say to Ross? Hi Ross. Hey. Um, I can, I can like sense the wisdom in you, and that it might make you uncomfortable with people your own age a lot. And Valid I guess <laughs> you going? something, something just wants me to tell you that you're seen and you're heard and you're held, and keep going and keep listening and keep trusting. Thank you. That means a lot. You're welcome. And time and again, what I try to relate is the ability to share space with people is amazing. That perspective on it, it even, I, I find every time I do this show, I find I'm learning. That I'm, it always, I love each new perspective because A, time and again, I find it relative and a piece of my perspective. To a T, every single person we've spoken to, there may be selection bias based on the fact that we're involved in that. But it's really meaningful, and it makes you just really want to know more than anything else. What does Willow love? (laughs) (laughs) Gotcha. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's uh, what we just did. Everything. Everything's a good answer. Sharing, yeah, mm. love. I, I think the Greeks have like nine different words for love. So, um, I, I love being in love. I love mm. seeing God in everything. I love the ocean. I love the mountains. I love um, experiencing breakthroughs with people when there's like this moment of silence and like a rebirth happens, and it's just like a spark within them when. And they like suddenly are, are free for even just a moment. When yep. when I allow space for someone to self liberate, it reminds me of who I am and what I'm capable of, and it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's so so beautiful. So so many things. I love. I, I love food. I love. <laughs> you're actively you're love. actively That's in it. the earth. That you're present yeah. in the things you're doing, and it, you're right. It's okay. It's a hard question for me to answer these days. I totally, it's not that I don't understand where you're coming from. It's that it resonates so deeply with me that Mm -hmm. for me, my entire life, um, both feature and fault, was that I found it easy to see the divinity in all living things. More so now the universe in general and the simple lessons of the rain or the shifting of the earth. But I'm also surrounded by critters and people um, and also socially uncomfortable around people. But that, yeah, how do you dice that out? I'm, I, it all matters to me. I'm absorbing it all. I mean, for as an extended... You're, still, you're, yeah. you're a performer, Matt. You, you're, that's why you have a podcast, because you like to express. You like when people tell you that your expressions are good you like to feel that connection and you like to give people that too yes it's part of it's part of what you are who you are and how you're built oh absolutely and then you question it only because you've decided in there somewhere that when you clock in somewhere and you clock out that little bucket is a bucket of time is when you make money but really when you open the door for someone when you smile at ross when you share a laugh with someone, right. when you enjoy your hot cereal in the morning, when you enjoy <laughs> coffee, maybe a little too late in the afternoon, when you get into a bubble bath, when you self-care 
Saltwater float. When you, when you remember that all of those things are moving energy in a dance with love, and that is what yes. brings you prosperity. That is what helps you. I believe be in, in love that. Life, you know. I, I, I. How do I put this? I have actively committed to that. That I. You know, it's funny. I have to give Bill Clinton some credit for, her, you know, the way I ended up finally finding the medium. Though now I've branched off into other mediums. But it was the people overwhelmed by Bill Clinton because when you spoke to him, you knew there was no one else in the room at the moment. There was no one else in the world. He made that connection. And I was whatever age and thought, yeah, eye contact. I'm going to work on that. And then mm. it be, it was amazing. People were blown away by the fact somebody was listening. Oh yeah. That when you went somewhere, the big my big push against corporate America was, in my head, no, I must treat people like people before I treat them like money. I get that I'm here to make a delivery. I'm get here that I'm here to work all day or whatever. But when I ask how somebody's doing, I am going to stay for the answer because they're people and so am I and that matters more than any of this other bullshit <laughs> what do you fear I just fear that I'm not going to have enough time but I'm going to run out I'm not going to have done all the things I want to do in this body at this time because this is the only time that life is going to express itself as Willow Drake and I want to make the most of it my biggest my biggest resistance is i mean i say i'm a leo I, I really that 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 image is in my mind of a lion just pacing back and forth in a cage and that's how i feel in my Wait life up. you know just trapped 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 mm. trapped all the time like the, the deepest darkest moments i have i feel trapped because i'm trapped in this body i'm trapped in this life i'm trapped in this blah 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 blah, blah. those are the stories those are the agreements so i'm here to help you to remember who you are, but also to stop being so trapped and see this as an opportunity to be in love and to enjoy it. But then also zoom out and realize that the part of me is that is eternal has already done everything that there is to do mm -hmm. in every body that's ever existed in all dimensions through space and time. So there's no rush and there's yep. no hurry and there's no worry if i die in 10 seconds because i'll just climb mount everest in the next body i guess mm -hmm. you know well that the universe isn't impatient it's been universing the whole time we are yep mm -hmm. you know that it has it, it, it it's what it always was it it and that for me it's always been lesson that it it looking back now mind you mm. um on this passage, I know that it all feels like school. That when there were moments in life that felt like speed bumps, that was because it was time to slow down and I was moving into a school zone. There were things to write, to figure out. None of them felt good. I felt that, uh, I will tell you that that description you're describing sounds very much up till about, let me think, I went into therapy at 49 and a half. <laughs> that when I finally gave in and quit fighting it on my own, that I, I, I realized that I, that the reality was I had been the one fighting. Not no, and that's no mm -hmm. projection on you. I don't mean that at all. It's interesting to hear us all find our meaning. That because I, no two of us are going to see it the same. That's what's so fun about all the religious debate. It's like wait a minute. We're all trying to describe the same thing, but we're fighting over the verbiage. That sounds silly. <laughs> yeah. So what do you feel like you know in this world? Mm. I know the power of silence. I can feel the energy too. Mm. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a shared space that when I first started this process, I didn't know if it was going to work this way. So 
I've been doing energy work since I was about 13. And I've always felt it very much in person, uh, you know, whether it was just that waiting for me to pay attention so I could pl play with the little balls of energy and that kind of thing. But so I've always had a charisma that I didn't understand, but that I was not comfortable with. And it ended up, it is so related to having that empathy, that ability to actually resonate with somebody, to hear somebody, to spend a moment in their space, even if it's just a couple. But the idea that somehow it was going to convert to a radio st radio style interview show was not something I planned or expected. The questions were because for some reason, two or three months ago, I started working on the questions and they were based on a variety of, oh, there were a bunch of French nihilists and stuff that were trying to understand how you could best understand a human being by just an X number of questions. And they came up with hundreds. It was crazy. And then the final order of the questions actually was based on how it looked aesthetically. And th that was the perfect order. Uh, but as I've expanded, I've been amazed as we've done almost 40 of these interviews. I've had active conversations with almost every single one of them about the fact that they could feel that we were connected. I have a slightly different viewpoint. I don't think I'm connecting people. I think I'm just uncovering the connections so they can see them, that they've always been there and we always are. Uh, you know that it's been recently that I've tried doing it over chat. I did somebody answer 10 questions with me over a three day chat. And yes, it, it was as resonant that there was a meaningful exchange. Um, I did it the same way I do it now um, with you, Willow. I, I include aspects of who I am, depending on where and when Ross is feeling. Sometimes he includes more or less, depending on how he's feeling in the day. Uh, that I'm now trying to do it with a group of about 30 people in one chat, where we're right like a question a week and I engage with each of them because I believe the real way and this is if I know anything because I honestly am more attached to the idea of not knowing anything is that it is meaningful for me to consistently and without end simply point over my shoulder and say have you met my friends I, you're all amazing Willow I, I've we've talked back and forth now for months and I felt it too, just like we're feeling it now. But it makes you wonder, in all of this, as we resonate so deeply, and you and I share such a beautiful moment, what do you wish you knew? I I wish I knew oh, this is hard because I know you guys know you already you you already know what you need to know <laughs> it's not a knowing universe but it's a feeling universe knowing, so I knowing what wish, I need to know about this side of the conversation yeah it I just doesn't change you know, the I, fact of you're a little guarded it's okay it's totally natural no, no, no. I'm not guarded, darling. I'm I'm slower than you. I've slowed down <laughs> to a speed that makes you uncomfortable in stillness and silence. So you're well, filling the space. Give well, me a moment. You're fine. I, in in the you. end, I, I have to put on the podcast, too. And I we, know. But I feel <laughs> the si I, I, I create fine. silence on purpose because the people that listen also need to digest what they're experiencing. You know? I do appreciate that. Yeah. I just know that then there's somebody else at four. <laughs> That's fine. But there's no rush. We're not trying. I mean, if I said 25 words during the entire podcast, would it be less satisfying or less fulfilling if I said 125 words? Those are low word counts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're honest. I'd struggle. You're honest. And that's important. Yeah. That's okay. The, there's a, you're right. There's a vibrancy to 
the rate at which we do it. And you know, what we need is other voices that communicate on our platform in any way they want that you're right, mm -hmm. move at a different pace. Yeah. Touche. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a wisdom thing. It's not a thinking thing. It's a feeling thing, right? So mm -hmm. when you ask a question and you give me the space and the time to feel it, then I'm responding rather than reacting. Because if I react, then I'm giving you the past, not who I am or who I intend to be. You're not giving me an opportunity to be anything but who I was before this second. Does that make sense? Well, my goal is for it to allow for an organic evolution that is both of us included. That as we mm -hmm. grow, we are creating, yes, a different space that at moments I feel uncomfort or you feel uncomfort. So, but hopefully what happens is in the end, what we feel more than anything else is the connection of being human, which includes all of that. Totally. But distill it down. You're still thinking too much. Ross, help me out here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you're on the same page. I mean, I do some t I do sometimes think that we talk a lot. I I don't talk I don't talk as much because I I don't always know what I'm going to say and I I try to I don't know. I I try to give it I'm trying to I'm trying to give allow myself to give myself thought because I've I've turned my my thought process into something that is so quick and like mm -hmm. so reactionary, reactionary yeah mm -hmm. and sometimes i'm it, it's like the thing we were talking about earlier um with the words mm -hmm. and how fat like me measuring mm -hmm. it's not so much that i'm measuring as i'm like i'm trying to actually think of what i truly want to say I, what I, is I, it that i want to say or what is it that ne I feel needs to be said? And yeah. for me, the truth that I'm not putting out is that the patterns are endless and it all is falling into place and it's overwhelming a lot. Mm. That the part people are expecting is me yeah. to go, oh, space. And what I'm going is, I, I it's, I try to point out to people that these weren't decisions I made. Right. I try to point out to people that, you know what, this has been a wide open and letting it flow through me. Right. Um, that, no, there are, there are moments of silence, but that's why the sense of meditation is non-distraction is so important to me that so when I'm here and present with somebody it's similar I I feel the other way and want to do a show where you don't feel like you have to leave so much space Willa mm. but when you ask a question it's no longer about you I, I didn't I didn't disagree with that you know what I mean I'm, I'm in no so, I'm, I'm yeah. not meaning I know to I know you're not way. I know I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. It feels like you're it feels like based upon what you've expressed that you're trying to create a certain product based upon what you're hearing the people want. Is that correct? Um, based on how I feel, uh Ross has the same issue with me. No, I don't believe in empty airspace. That in the end it's like a radio show. That if Stern okay. if Stern taught me anything that it was this beautiful realization that how I felt works relative to not like, I don't mean that in a, God, that sounded so argumentative. I don't know. No, no, okay. No, no, no. Don't apologize for who you are. You're perfect. Your expression is perfect. It's vulnerable. I, and I, I accept I, it. I wasn't you know? apologizing for who I am. <laughs> well, I mean, but you, you do, you do a lot. I don't, I don't know that you feel that, but it's okay. I, I will shut it's up okay. and I will just no. say, that You're fine. what I'm what I'm suggesting is that when you invite someone onto your show, 
and you ask me a question, you're, you're asking me to be vulnerable with you and Ross and your audience. Mm -hmm. And it's only fair that I am able to express myself authentically, which includes space. So if you want to take me as a brand, as a product, as a person. I don't think of that that way at all. I don't think of human well, beings I like that. Okay. I do. I do. I, I, I am I am a brand and I am a person. I have a social security number, so I'm kind of like a corporation according to the government. I'm a lot of things and I'm none of these things. But I, the point I'm making is that what you're doing is that you're you're capturing a part of who I am and you're expressing it in a way that you want to, which I'm giving you total access to do. Mm hmm and I'm allowing you to edit at will. Oh, I don't do that. Right? No, no, I, I I'm, anything. He wanted to edit things. I don't believe in that. Well, okay. <laughs> That's fair. That's even better. So, again, what you're asking me to do is to come onto your show and to your, your audience of people that I do not know. Like, you and know, be authentic. Some of them. <laughs> right? Yes, I want well, that. I mean, but and, you want me to be authentic, right? But I also am being authentic. And so, part of the process is yes, that. I exposed myself equally that the yeah. goal is similar to looking at a cat and lightly closing your eyes. You're giving the message that this is a safe space so safe that I use it too. Mm. So that the, the whole point and you're more open than a lot of people are. So it, I run into a lot of by sharing and giving of myself to that space it allows them time to occupy this space where you and I actually already spend a lot of time. Does that make Yeah, and it feels like, um, man, I'm going to be direct. It feels like you're trying to control the outcome. It feels like you're trying, and which is like, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It, that's why I say it's a product in itself. You're, the podcast mm -hmm. itself is a product. Um, so if you're trying to control the experience that the person is having of the product that makes total sense to me. I, I'm um, not trying to do I, that. And you're one out of 37 to say the opposite thing. Okay. So uh, that I'm working at trying, no, what I mean is I'm, tr I'm actually working hard at making it very organic and okay. not actually spoke earlier about the fact that you could, one of the things I love about it is specifically that the questions can be defined by the person taking the test that it's it goes away defined by the people that come on i've ended up in conversations that you know what were totally in places i never would have gotten epiphanies that the reality is i try to yeah i'm growing a tree here with somebody I, I, I apologize for at all making you feel that way, though. And I have, you know, that. You can't make me feel anyway. Well, no, that's true. I take true. responsibility for my experience of this reality. Well, no, and I, I, I don't mean to come across that way. <laughs> You're not that coming the, across that way. That's the that point I'm making of this whole well, thing. No, is that, that there's a very, the that there was a, there. there was a flip and then there was a. No, all of a sudden it felt like you wanted to take on a luxury tone and put everybody in their place. Yeah. Which seemed odd relative to where the experience was. There was a sudden flip. I can't always play on the channel that isn't my highest expansion. It becomes challenging for me. I haven't really perfected that art. So if I feel like i don't and it's it's hard i really to am right here with you give me what your truth is i, I, I don't compartmentalize things um as, as well as i used to so again like i can't i can't change depending on the situation a lot of times it feels inauthentic so the point i i guess let's rewind all the way back well, we've got about five minutes because we've got an That's interview totally in 15. Fine. I know, and I hate that. I, I don't, that I, isn't I, I, a, go ahead. No I have no expectation. Um, You're okay. So, but yeah, the, it, 
Hmm. Like Ross said, I take moments now to slow down and be with what is and make sure that it's coming from a place of authenticity as opposed to reaction, past, personality, blah, 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 blah. Like the authentic, deepest, deepest me, not someone coming from fear or, or anything like that. So um, expressing and slowing down and speaking slowly and needing some space. And it felt like you were rushing in to fill the space. That's all that happened. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It was an experience that I had, and I, I'm not judging it at all. Well, and we'd love did. to have you back. I would love to do more of this. <laughs> I, hey, man, I, I got nothing on the calendar. I'm just flowing from thing to thing. So you call me up, and I'll be there. Okay. The, <laughs> that's no, a lie. I, I definitely have things on the calendar. I know but, that. You know, but I, I, yeah. <laughs> I really, I, I honestly believe uh, that the most powerful thing I can do has nothing to do with traditional sense of prosperity it really is a have you met my friends that i'm blown away by the conversation i loved uh, we were really deep into it and i you know what it was meaningful to me good that no i i, I can't leave minutes of silence on the show which is just a a personal commitment to the people watching you know not in a bad way. I, I I would love to have you do any of those kinds of things and would share it and would stand by you and your voice. Totally. 100%. I would agree that you shouldn't have minutes of silence. Totally. No, I know. I, I, I'm not. And so I'm. it's straight a perspective projection thing. And I'm not. I love you. You're amazing. I love everyone. But no, really, Willow. I love you deeply and I know times when you have reached out because you felt you needed to that it was deeply moving to me. So no, I would more and more. I look forward to it. Good. Thank you for talking to me. Well, thank you. Ross, um, I'm very curious about even the first five minutes of your experience of that you uh, that uh, subconscious speaks. So please tell me what you think. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much, Willow. You're so you can, welcome. You can hang. Da, 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 da. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I'm going to go take care of babies now. Oh, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. Have a good time. I love you, <laughs> All right, you too. thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.